Hey guys and welcome back to the garden. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Blanca. So today's video you guys, so many different things I want to cover. Um, there are just um, changes in the garden um, that I want to show you guys. I want to talk to you guys about what I'm going to finally do about my fertilizing. Uh, last video I posted um, about my fertilizing, how I wanted to change it, how I wanted to get more flowers um, was amazing. The response was so awesome. I got you guys um, advice and comments in the comment section of that video. I also got some DMs, text messages, and phone calls from growers just um, kind of trying to give me advice on what to do. Um, so I want to share with you guys what um, what they told me because maybe it's going to be helpful for you guys. Um, now my growing conditions are out here. This is where I keep most of my orchids. Well, except for the orchids that I keep inside my bathroom, inside my home uh, because they do not like the sun. You guys have asked me about my Miltoniopsis inside the bathrooms. They are doing not so good i have lots of construction inside so they've suffered a little bit and hopefully i will um talk to you guys about them um in in future videos but um i want to focus on this out here so my growing conditions you guys are out here all around my garden all around my yard i've got orchids on my palm trees i've got orchids inside my orchid section i've got orchids around um my oak trees towards the outside. I've got orchids living out here and these are my growing conditions. So these growing conditions can sometimes be a little bit challenging <laughs> uh, to say the least. I have no control on the weather. I have no control on the temperature. So um, it's it's not as easy as it looks. It's not as, as fun and glorious as you might as you might as you might think it is you know if you guys are growing like in balconies or you guys are growing inside greenhouses or shade houses so it's a, it's a little bit more challenging when i grow out here because um you know things happen every day uh one of the things that are the most frustrating to me is of course getting an orchid um that's never bloomed before and then a palm from comes or a cold temperature comes and completely damages it um so this morning I was super excited because I'm getting another flower on my Dibiana hybrid over here. This is my golf green. Let's see, I wanna show you the tag before I butcher it. Uh, this is my golf green hair pig. Beautiful flowers. My cat Leia is getting bigger. It's getting, um, you know, larger. It's giving me flowers. It's gonna be the second time that she gives me a flower this week. I mean this this year um but then of course this happens a palm frond fell right over it and damaged the one leaf that this new growth has <laughs> so not sure if it's going to be um it's going to survive um just because that the leaf is now broken and then i'm about to get a brand new flower from here so that was very frustrating to see and this is the culprit right over here and there is no way, you guys, there is no way for, um, for us to keep these palm fronds from falling. I mean, I've got so many trees around my property that there is no way. I mean, it's like slave work. <laughs> we have to constantly be picking them up and there's no way, there's no way around it. I love them. I mean, I love my palm trees, but you know, every now and then they do, they do cause damage out here and one of the, the biggest damages was done yesterday when a huge palm frond fell right over my grow gazebo. And now it's pancaked. So I'm just gonna walk around here. So the first thing I got home yesterday from work, my husband was like, we've got an issue in your orchid section. You know, my, of course my brain first goes to my orchids and I'm like, what happened? Did somebody walk away with all my orchids? And he's like, no. So that was a relief. You know, I'm always scared that somebody's gonna walk into my property like in the middle of the night and take all of my orchids. That is that is a fear that, you know, I'm, I'm scared, even though we've got cameras and and all that, but you know, you just never know. You're growing out here, you're, you're exposed. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, that is one of my fears. So anyways, that did not happen, but this happened. So now one of my grow gazebos is completely flattened out. That's what it's supposed to look like. I mean, this is the older one. This one I've had for almost um, a little bit over, I want to say three years. So the top portion is ruined. I can still hang Vandas from here, but I'm going to have to relocate some of the orchids under here that maybe appreciated the shade that that little 
which cover gave it. So I'm gonna have to just evaluate and move things around. Uh, now another palm frong fell over the cables and a bunch of those orchids were knocked down, but they're okay. My orchids are okay. And I mean, this is something that I can probably replace if they still have them. I got this at Lowe's a few years ago and the last time I saw they were, it was on sale because I think it was, got discontinued, but maybe there's gonna be another one that I could buy that I can eventually replace it. But for now, it's still gonna be able to hold my bandas up, so. Challenges, challenges of growing out here in the wild. So I also wanted to, um, since I'm talking about that, just tell you guys, I, you guys have always suggested that I put, or that I invest in like a greenhouse or like a, like a shaded, that's a new cat layer that's growing. <laughs> that's my Sarah Palin hockey mom, by the way. Um, that I that I invest in like a like a greenhouse or like a, a shaded house or something covered out here, and it's something that I've been thinking. And this is where this video is gonna get long and chatty because you know it always goes somewhere where I don't think I'm gonna talk about, and then I end up having like a full fledged conversation about just because I love to share with you guys my ideas and get your input. So. I am thinking of doing something. Now, I don't know if it's gonna be like a, like a greenhouse or a shade house, or, but it's gonna be something because I need to try to um, take some of these orchids out of here that don't like to be out here in the wild. <laughs> like, especially the ones that have like the bigger leaves. My Sologenes, my, my nun orchid, which is suffering down here. Um, just other orchids. I even heard my zygos, my zygopetlum leaves. Um, those those orchids are a little bit more delicate. Even my ambrecum that I keep under my terrace. Maybe those will do better if I keep them somewhere out here in a more shaded spot. So I, I show you, I'm showing you this area. First of all, because this is a north facing window. So my everything over here is north facing and east, and this is east facing, right? So anything over here does really, really well because it gets the morning sun and it doesn't get um, the afternoon heat and sun that we normally get like around 1, 1 and 2 p.m. So I am thinking to do something in this in this area, in this space where I'm not gonna block. So you see, I cannot block this. This is where, this is the only entrance to my property that, you know, the, the gardeners come in through there, the pool technicians come in through there, anything that's going on in my garden or in my yard that's the entrance so i can't block this so that's out of the question now that area over there on that side is west west um it's my west facing side it's the brightest side and i don't want to go over there i want to take advantage of this area when i had my bandas hanging from this window this is where they would do the best so i know that this is the best location in my entire garden and then over here i have because i had a kennel i we used to have really big big dogs um but that was years years ago so um we don't have big dogs anymore we just have our three little little dogs so we don't use this kennel we don't use this area at all i just have to get rid of the junk <laughs> sorry everything's messy it's like no time so get rid of this and then i have um this slab of concrete here where i can actually create something in this area and i think my orchids would like that east facing it is like where I have the pool pumps and where I have, you know, the AC units and I can probably do something here. That's what I was thinking. Um, maybe build something there. I don't know. I mean, I've got so many different ideas and, and taking you guys as advice to get like a greenhouse or somewhere that's, that's not as, as wild as living out here and all this open area. So let me know what you guys think you know maybe maybe i'll i'll i'll, I'll think I'll, I'll do something there but i think that some of my orchids um not my vandas or maybe maybe some vandas who knows i can probably hang from there but not not all my orchids i mean some of my orchids under here do amazing and i'm not going to relocate them and i love my orchid oasis under there but just like the ones that i see that are suffering i'll put them all on that side so that's a thought that's an idea <laughs> All right, my doggies are chasing squirrels. All right, so now I want to talk to you guys. Look at, look at how funny. Uh -huh. So they're there because there's squirrels over, like running on top of the, of the fence. And my dogs think that they could catch them. <laughs> Especially Obi, he's like jumping up and down, trying to catch those squirrels. It's hilarious, you see? 
Look at that. Look at this girl. All right, you guys. So now, I'm back to my orchids. All right. Oh, exciting news. So last video, I also showed you guys that my grammatophyllums were in spike. And you guys said, I think you have a third spike. And you know what? I ran out here and I do. So, ah, uh, now my dogs are going to look crazy. So I do have a third spike on my grammatophyllum, you guys. I totally missed it. It's right here. It was little. So I've got two and I've got three. So, you know, I don't know what happens with me. When I start making videos, it's like, a, it's like I create a blind spot. I can't talk and show you guys and observe at the same time. But thankfully, you guys are very observant. And you guys let me know that I do have, indeed, a third spike. So I've got three growing on this grammatophyllum. And these grammatophyllums are growing right in here. Full sun, you guys. Hardly ever get watered because their pseudobulbs are so thick that they just absorb all of the water and you don't hardly ever have to um, fertilize, um, water them. So that's exciting. These are getting, these are getting really long, my Schomburgias. And then my Dendrobium nobili, it's the only one I keep potted. She's also blooming nicely and lots of new blooms. So you guys did ask me if my Dendrobium nobilis, I keep them um, any potted and in any media. And I actually keep them bare root. This is all bare root inside this. I just kind of placed her over here, hoping that she would just, um, you know, all these roots will go down here, which has not happened. <laughs> but, um, you know, she's happy. She's happy here. Look at all of these new growths. I have a ton, a ton of new growths, you guys. And flowers. And, and she's blooming. She's blooming really nice. All right, so just wanted to show you that. Wanted to give you an update on my Emma Von Deventure for those Emma Von Deventure fans. My Emma Von Deventure has two flower spikes. One here and one here. I might spray her I might just spray her for thrips because she's got two flower spikes, but this one here looks a little crispy. You see that? Two flower spikes on my Emma Von Deventure. I'm not sure why that one's looking like that, but it is. All right, so let me talk to you guys about now um, the fertilizing. The fertilizing and the advice that I got let's see all right so last video like i mentioned to you guys um 12 minutes ago when i opened my, when i opened my video um i talked to you guys about you know my fertilizing i did a video i show i told you guys that i was going to change it up a little bit and i got lots of lots of information and with all that information that you guys gave me i also got information from growers so this is what i am going to do because this is what's probably going to work the best for my growing conditions, remember that I do grow in the wild. <laughs> for those growing indoors and in pots and in balconies, you, you guys might have to do something a little bit different. Um, but I'm gonna share with you guys what I'm gonna do just in case you grow the same as I do and what I was told by, by some growers. So my idea was to change up my routine and my routine since January has been once a week, one teaspoon per gallon of water um, to my orchid. So what I do is that I mix it in here in my insecticide sprayer and all this all this stuff I'm gonna link it down in the in the in the description box in case you guys want to get it. If you guys can't order from Ophi or you don't want to run to Ophi, which is my go-to orchid supply store, um, you can always um, order on Amazon. So that's all been linked. Um, and Ophi does ship internationally and domestically, just in case. Um, so I mix everything inside my insecticide sprayer. This is a a gallon sprayer that I attach to my hose. This goes attached to the hose. This is the spraying spout. Um, and I can get six gallons of, of mixture. Once I'm done with this, I can, I can get six gallons of, um, six gallons sprayed in total. So I, I, I sometimes have to fill this up two or three times um, when I fertilize, but just wanted to show you that so I can put it to the side. All right, so I mix everything in here. So what I used to do is I used to do one teaspoon of, of the 202020, which I'm now going to change to a full tablespoon of 202020. Since my orchids get watered 
every single day by the sprinklers. I was reading back here that for outdoor plants, it's one tablespoon per gallon of water. Now this might not necessarily mean that your plants are your orchids. This might just be, this is just in general. But anything outdoors can take up to one tablespoon per gallon of water. And I did confirm this um, with, with the growers. And in my case, it's okay to do one tablespoon per gallon of water every two days because my orchids get flushed out every single day and then it rains in between sometimes. So one tablespoon per gallon of water is what I'm gonna be using every two or three days, depending on, you know, weather permitting, you know, it just all depends. And um, that, sorry, I just got, I just got, um, got a, a message from another grower. So um, one tablespoon per gallon of water every two to three days of the 2020, okay? one tablespoon remember i used to use one teaspoon now i'm switching it up to one tablespoon one tablespoon of the organic kelp this goes inside my my mix every single time i fertilize it's great for roots it will um you know it's just it's just organic kelp it's great for roots it's great for um for 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 root production for it's just amazing for them so we're doing the one tablespoon of the seaweed kelp and then I'm gonna do one teaspoon of the Epsom salt. Now this is magnesium sulfate. It's amazing for um, for the leaves. It makes them green. Gives them, you know, it's 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 you know, part of like their whole chlorophyll production. This this is really good to to apply it. So I always do. I always apply my Epsom salt to the mixture. So we're doing again one table one one teaspoon of the epsom salt per gallon of water one tablespoon of the seaweed kelp per gallon of water and one tablespoon of the all-purpose jack's classic 2020 20. this is going to be my new fertilizing method my new fertilizing ingredients since i grew outdoors since everything gets flushed every single day we're doing a super heavy feed every two to three days this is what I'm going to do. Now, another thing that they mentioned to me was the, uh, the slow release fertilizers, you guys. For some reason, there's some growers that are super opposed to that. And there's one specific particular grower that um, we really got into the conversation. And I'm just going to show you flowers while I talk because now it's going to get boring. <laughs> um, if I just show you like, um, if I just show you the, uh, the fertilizers like in your face. So slow release. And I'm going to walk to my orchid section. Um, slow release this uh, this grower advised me against it um because slow release what it will do and and you know what i've heard it I, I did hear it from ben before for my vandas and this is why i do not put slow release on my vandas um because it burns the roots and i did try it and i had horrible results with slow release on my vandas so for sure the vandas were not even in that slow release um um, category like if like if I wanted to do a slow release I would put it on the orchids that are not my vandas so like my insidiums um, my cymbidiums just every other orchid that I have in my collection that's not that's not a vanda was gonna get the slow release but now I decided that I am not gonna do it um, because what I was told from this grower was that the slow release yeah it'll make your plants grow faster um, quicker but eventually it's gonna burn the roots and it'll die, it'll kill off the plant or it'll kill off the orchid. So that's not something that I wanna even play with, especially like if I put it around around these guys. Um, she said that, or he said that, you know, putting slow release will, the, grow, the orchids will grow faster, but eventually the roots will, will die off. So not going to be using any slow release anytime you know anytime in the near future just wanted to give you guys that update uh, for those that recommended it um, maybe it works great for you guys maybe it's a different type of slow release I do know that um there's different there's different slow releases out there but I just don't you know I like my 2020 so I think I'm gonna stick with the 2020 and that new that new um that new recipe <laughs> or that new is that even what it's called uh, that new recipe that I'm doing, which is a one tablespoon per gallon of water, and see how it does. See how it goes. 
but um but definitely more often so that was the information about that. look at this new flowers that was the information about the uh the fertilizing that i want to share with you guys look at how pretty oh my gosh i really like this hoya my hoyas are doing really good you guys look at that mm, it smells so good so pretty and detailed right amazing let me show you the tag for this one and i've got two two peduncles two blooms on this one and this one came from lee's orchids and things and it's my hoya australis lee's orchids and things um which is lorraine at ofi and ofi's having another show in a few weeks if you guys are still here <laughs> it's been 20 minutes you guys probably already logged off but um, Ophi's gonna have a another orchid show come March 26th that weekend and not sure what the who the vendors will be but I'll post it in my Instagram and let you guys know and that's it you guys this was today's video lots of information information overload <laughs> but this these are so pretty this one's from Brethren Look at those colors, cranberry and yellow. My friend Nelson loves this color combination. And Nelson, this is for you. He he gets he gets. <laughs> this is a tag, and then I'll tell you guys really quick. Um, so this is a tag right here, the Fall Brethren's IMP. There you go. And those are the those are the parents. So Nelson loves a cranberry and, and, and yellow combination. So this is a perfect one. Nelson, if you don't have this one, this is um, the colors that you like. And he always gets a kick out of me mentioning and showing him things. He's like, you're so funny. You can just text me. <laughs> I know. I know I can just text you, but I just wanted to show you. Look at that. Look at those colors. Wow. Beautiful. So I do have cranberry and yellow also in my collection. There you go. So I'm gonna end it right here, you guys. Thank you for watching. Um, like I said, today was like information overload. Um, just trying to figure out how to make my orchids happy. And and hopefully that um fertilizing information helped you guys. Again, thank you for your advice, thank you for your comments, thank you for everything, and thank you for being part of my channel. You guys are the ones that make it amazing. And I will stop recording this because I have to redo it in Spanish. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, I do have a Spanish channel and I've had it for a while and I kind of abandoned it for a year. So now I'm back. So if you guys like my Spanish voice better and understand that language better, head on over to Blanca y su Jardín de Orquídeas. That is, a, that is the name of my Spanish channel. And I will redo all this. Hopefully I remember everything I talked about and I will um, film it again in Spanish. All right, you guys, this is today's video. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful week and happy growing. <laughs> happy growing. Have a wonderful week and um, I'll see you soon in my next video. <laughs> Bye.